Hello again, it's me, Billy, back with uh, yet uh, another quick interview with one of our celebrity artists on board. You've uh, picked the cruise, ladies and gentlemen, that is one of the most unique cruises that we host every year on one of our vessels, and this is a connoisseur cruise. We have three of the most unique voices in the art world, uh, Bill Mack, Sherry Hatchet Bowman, and in a few seconds, you're gonna meet Dorit Levy. Uh, she is an artist whose influences are from uh, artists like Picasso and Brock, and she is has the most unique style that uh, we are very fortunate enough to represent on board, and you're going to get a chance to meet her. Uh, she will be having her painting demonstration, will be in the gallery every night, and uh, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful example of her artwork, and here right next to me is... Mrs. Dorit Levy, nice to meet you, Pleasure and thank you, you for coming on board. Now, a couple questions that um, we want to ask you and, and uh, go through is, first of all, she's brought on this book. Uh, all of our collectors who are uh, lucky enough to obtain one of her originals on board this cruise, you will receive one of these books for free. Uh, Dorit, I believe you're kind enough to autograph it. Yes, uh, and Dorit comes to us. Where is your hometown? Well, I come from Israel. Right. Uh, my hometown is Tel Aviv. Wow. So uh, you and your husband have traveled, all, all, and that's almost halfway across the world to be yeah. here on board uh, this cruise. Now, Dorit, um, you started to paint at a very young age. How old were you when you started? Uh, I was seven years old when I started to paint mm -hmm. uh, with one of the most uh, popular and famous artists in Israel called Edwin Salomon. And he was and an influence? Uh, he was one of my influence. Uh, other artists like Picasso, yes. and he was my influence. I can see that you can yes. see a wonderful cubist feel in her artwork, um, and also not only the cubist feel. Uh, you've you, you at one point you started painting at a young age, but at one point every artist decides I want to be an artist. How old were you, or when did you decide that you wanted to? commit to art for the rest of your life? Well, when I joined the army, you know, in okay. Israel it's duty to be in the army. I, I was a graphic designer. Uh, then the, my command says that uh, I paint beautifully and I take a notice of this and I say, maybe I will be an artist. <laughs> yeah. So. From that I point on. From now there's also, we've all had, uh, every artist when they create of art, uh, most artists want the viewer to have a feeling. They want, they want them to see something or to feel something. What is, when someone views your art, when someone sees your art, uh, whether it's in a museum, whether it's here on board or in a gallery, what would you like them to feel? Well, I like people to feel, first of all, joy and happiness. That's great. And. Uh, you know, there is enough suffering in the world. Yeah. And with my color, I, I believe I give people some love and joy. And there are certain colors that you do prefer to use. Uh, I prefer uh, warm colors in my painting. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can see that uh, from a wonderful reds uh, to the gold backgrounds up on here to. Uh, yeah. On our right-hand side, you can see these beautiful, beautiful pieces yes. with 24-karat uh, gold leaf uh, embellishment in them. I use um, uh, I use an oil painting, mm -hmm. uh, and as you say, a, a gold leaf here. Right and now, when you are developing, I'm just I want to make sure I had these questions right. When you're developing your painting, where does your ideas come? I mean, when you look around, and ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind everybody. Don't forget to come to Deck 5. The art gallery is open 24 hours a day. Uh, you'll be able to view Dorit's art at all times, and you'll get a chance to view this master's works uh, every day. And you can see uh, where you've got such a great style. Each work of art has that warm feeling, but they're, they're unique. Where do you get your ideas from? Where do you begin? Well, most of, it, of the ideas come from my head. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I take, when I take the canvas, it, it, was, it, it is white canvas. Yes. And I immediately see the image on the canvas. 
and just draw what I see. Re and now, also for the viewers who are going to get an opportunity to view this, uh, we are going to loop this and you get a chance to hopefully watch it uh, more than once. Now there is something I will provide for all of our collectors. Come down and ask me about it. Um, Dorit is a symbolic artist and she hides certain symbols within all of her pieces and it's kind of a fun game now for anybody who sees this. They're going to come down and you're going to look at her art and you're going to see a bird, right? There's a bird. There's triangles. Um, there's also... Uh, what are your other symbols that we uh, have here? It's it's going to be... Uh, how do you call it? I don't know. The bow tie. Yeah. The bow tie. Oh, there we... Okay, I have it here written down. And I can get anybody a copy of this. We've got the triangle, which is one of your signatures. Now, uh, you will find the triangle in all of her pieces located around. You'll also find the birds. What does the bird symbolize? Well, for me, the bird is freedom very and the world above. True. That yeah. is very nice. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask her, we also have now the fish. Uh, is not every piece, but there is a fish uh, which symbolizes endless movement. Yes. It's just because continue, uh, um it's just a continuing flow, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I and when anybody comes down, we'll get you all this. The bow tie, which is this, is also the butterfly. Tenderness, mystery, lightness, and also freedom, is the tie. Now the square. It uh, this where we have the square, in this one here, and this represents uh, another dimension without perspective and stability. Mm -hmm. Because I, I draw flat, you know, it's, right. it's not with pr perspective. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's why I do the squares and they give a third dim dimension. And you have eyes. No. No I eyes. Don't, no, I don't there are no eyes. There because it yeah. takes the focus from the painting. That's true. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I hope everybody got a chance to understand that. Yeah. When you, and I've, I've learned this in the past. When you paint the eyes of a person, the first thing you will notice is that person's eyes. But in Dorit, she doesn't want to because it'll take away from the initial feeling you'll get when you walk by her artwork. Ladies and gentlemen, I do hope to see you around. Dorit, it has been a pleasure uh, to get a chance to have you with me and to, to share this cruise with you and everybody on board. Don't forget to drop by the art gallery on deck number five. We're open 24 hours a day. We're here every evening, 7.30 to 8.30. Have a wonderful cruise. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>